In this first problem, we have a mass of 10 kilograms hanging on a spring. We add another mass connecting, connecting it to the first. That second mass will also be 10 kilograms. When we do, our spring drops by another 9 centimeters. What will be our period of harmonic motion if we begin to oscillate this system? Now, this is a multi-step problem because in order to figure out the period of harmonic motion for a spring mass system, we will need 2 pi times the square root of m over k. So we need both the mass and the kilograms. Well, what's our mass? Well, we can see that we have two masses in this problem. We have a green mass and we have a red mass. That should be pretty simple since both of those are 10, so we can just say our total mass is 10 kilograms. I'm sorry, 20 kilograms. However, the K is a different story. We need to figure out our K as well if we want to figure out this period. Now, what information do we have? Where do we normally get K from? Well, we get that from Hooke's Law. So let's write that out over here. Hooke's Law is the force of a spring will be equal to its spring constant times the distance that it has moved. So we have this situation here where our spring moves by 9 centimeters. So I can say x is 9. I'm looking for k. But what would that force be? Well, it changed by 9 centimeters when I added the red mass. And so that red mass would have a force of gravity equal to 10 times 9.8 which would be 980. Okay, now I've got some numbers here, but I need to keep in mind my units because this 9 is not 9 meters, and x would always be in meters. 9 is 9 centimeters, and this would be 0 0.09 meters. There are 100 centimeters in a meter, so we'll have to keep that in mind. So I can divide both sides by 0 0.09, And I get 10,900. Now I can plug these into my equation and solve for my period. And when I do that, I get a period of 0.269 seconds. There we go. Now this problem is a little bit different. We have a hanging mass, and it's already moving. And it moves back and forth with a frequency of 0 0.065 hertz. So this mass would be oscillating up and down, going from here to here. And it would do that at a cycle of 0 0.065 hertz, so 0 0.065 cycles every second. So this is moving very slowly. It has a spring mass constant of 12 newtons per meter. And what we want to know is, what's the mass of this? So what we can do first is convert this frequency into a period. So I need to remember that my period is equal to 1 over frequency. So I can take the reciprocal of 0 0.065, and that will give me my period. That gives me a period of 15 seconds. Once I have the period, I can solve for the mass using my period of harmonic oscillation. It's going to be t equals 2 pi times the square root of m over k. So now I'm trying to solve for m. So how could I solve for m? Let's just do the algebra here because that's, it's going to be important to know that. Well, if I want to solve for m, I need to get it out of this square root. So the first thing I want to do is I want to square everything. So I'm going to square everything. So I'm going to end up with t squared equals 4 pi squared m over k. And then I want to get m by itself so I can multiply both sides by k over 4 pi squared. And that'll cancel out my 4 pi squared. That'll cancel out my k. And I end up with k t squared over 4 pi squared. 
equals m. Now I have a generalized equation that I can solve for m every time. So let's punch those numbers in and let's find the value of m. And when I plug that into my calculator, I get 68.4 kilograms. There's my answer. Let's try a pendulum. In this problem, I want to know two things. One, what is the period of my oscillation? And two, what is the height that this pendulum rises to as it oscillates? It's going to go to a, an angle of 15 degrees. It has an overall length of 2 meters on the string. And it has a mass of 16 kilograms. Let's solve for the period first. The period for a pendulum is going to be equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. So all I need to do for that one is plug my numbers in. I'm going to have 2 pi times the square root of L, which is 2 meters, over 9.8, which is my acceleration due to gravity. And for that, I get 2.84 seconds. So that's my period. So that wasn't too bad. In order to find the height, I need to keep in mind that this is an angle. So as this pendulum moves, it's going to follow an angle. And so I can find my difference in height by finding that the sides of this triangle. Because now the length, the length of this string becomes my hypotenuse. And the distance from the point where the string is attached to its new height, this distance right here, that would be the adjacent side of that triangle. Now that wouldn't tell me the height directly, however I could use that to find the height. This is a two-step process. And so I'm going to I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the length of my string times the cosine, because so ka toa, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, times that the cosine of that angle, and that'll give me that adjacent side. So let's go ahead and do that. That's going to be 2 times the cosine of 15. And that gets me 1.9. Okay, 1.9 meters. So this red distance is 1.9 meters. So if I want to know the height that this gets to, the height between there and there, how would I find that? Well, that's just going to be, the height is just going to be my change in y. which is really going to give me the difference between these two numbers. I would take I would take my final minus my initial, which my final is 1.9 minus my initial of 2, and I get a height of negative 0.1. And that's based on our frame of reference, because clearly if I'm saying this is a positive 2 meters, then down is positive. And then going up, I would get a negative height. So that's how we find that height. Now here's a pretty common challenging problem. I have this pendulum set up such that if I pull it out to the right, it has a length L. If I let it go, it's going to run into this obstacle, and then its string will be shrunk down to one half L because the rest of the string will be up against the obstacle it will not have the same period on both sides. So what we have here is a more dynamic situation. The period changes past this point right here. To the left, the period will be based on 1 half L. To the right, the period will be based on L. So what I want to know is, what is the total period? And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to solve each side of this individually and then add them together. But one thing I need to keep in mind, each side of this will only be one half of a period. So this side right here from this point to this point and back again. So there to there to there. That will be one half of a period. And that period will be equal to 2 pi the square root of L over G. Okay, simple enough. Then the other side will be from here to here and back again. So it'll be the same thing. It'll be another one half T 
and that t will be equal to 2 pi is the square root of 1 half l. So l over 2g. That's 1 half of l over g. Okay? So now I'm going to need to do both of these equations and divide it by 2. So let's find our two periods first. So I've got my turquoise period and I've got my pink. So 2 pi times the square root of L over G, well L is 1. So 2 pi times the square root of 1 over G. So my pink is 2.0 seconds. Perfect. And then my blue, what will that be? I'm going to do the same calculation, 2 pi times the square root of 1 over 2g. And that will give me 1.4 seconds. And so with these two, I can now figure out my total period, but I need to take half of this first. So both of these need to be divided by 2. So 1.4 divided by 2 would be 0.7 seconds, and 2 divided by 2 would be 1. And so then I just need to add them together. Once I add them together, then I get a period of 1.7 seconds. Now, we could have put this 1 half into these base equations right here by multiplying both sides by 1 half. And if I had done that, then this 1 half would have just canceled out that. And I would have ended up with pi times the square root of L over G. And then I could have added those directly. I could have made one customized equation. I could have said pi times the square root of L over G plus pi times the square root of L over G. There we go. So now we've got some practice solving some of these periods of harmonic motion. We're basically rearranging this equation. That's a little more complex than other things that we've worked with. However, it is still just algebra. We just need to be able to figure out where our variables are and use them to our advantage.